Dear colleagues, let me present the report Incorporation of Upcycling Techniques into Technology Education. The authors are Jana Shugaila, Tetiana Derkach, Anastasia Spetna, and Tamara Ustenka, representatives of Kiev National University of Technologies and Design and International Sustainability Academy. The global fashion industry annually produces 92 millions of tons of waste. One of the um, critical problems nowadays is optimal disposal and reuse of textile waste. The role of higher education in promoting the ideas of sustainable development, circular economy, and the formation of ethical standards for the reuse of products is defining. It consists both in the introduction of new organizational forms that enhance the effectiveness of educational activities and in bringing the contact of content of educational programs to the requirements of professional activity in terms of sustainable development. Analysis of the educational program, programs in professional education in various specialities showed that the competences of graduates required for sustainable production are not provided at the level of approved standards of higher education in Ukraine. As a result, students have specific gaps in knowledge. Students should be able to use technologies aimed at waste administration, among the list of which are technologies of recycling and upcycling. It is necessary to introduce skills of textile waste administration, both at all stages of production and the stage of use and subsequent disposal of used products into the educational process of technology education to train specialists capable of working in a sustainable environment according to modern circular economy models. The research aims to formulate existing problems and explore ways to form the necessary competences of future technologists and designers of the light industry, which will provide knowledge and skills on waste disposal of fashion industry products and work in the business environment of circular economy models. People buy clothes to wear for a short period. Then these clothes quickly turn into textile waste. Textile waste can be classified in three categories. First is residues of many manufacturing process in the textile and garment industry. The second type is called textile waste after consumption. And the third category is post-industrial textile waste formed during production processes as byproducts. The amount of waste after consumption is excessive and constantly increasing. This problem is unlikely to be solved entirely as long as designers in developing their products will not embed the possibility of their reuse, style change, design change, and build the option of reproduction in the design of all products. Recycling is a method of reusing or recycling used clothing and waste materials in the production process. Recycling can go one of two ways. The first way is downcycling when receiving a substance of lower quality. And this way, used clothes can be pr processed into non-woven textiles, building insulation, rags, or carpeting. The second way is upcycling. It can be illustrated as upward processing. Upcycling should be considered primarily as a process of reconstruction. It creates an original waste product that usually has a higher retail cost than traditional recyclables. Creating business models in the fashion industry based on circular economy principles has at least three different dimensions. The first is related to personal characteristics and psychological motivation for the use of upcycling technologies. The second dimension is the availability and development of individual skills, knowledge and skills in upcycling. And the third level is the knowledge and skills needed to apply upcycling technologies in the business environment. Combination model of theory of interpersonal behavior and theory of planned behavior is presented on the slide. It identifies three main factors that shape the probability of behavior. They are behavior intention, the strengths of habits, and the presence or absence of, of facilitating conditions. Habits are measured by the number of attempts to act. Facilitating conditions are, for example, tools, products, or materials. 
indicator of frequency of upcycling is how often the person practices upcycling. The benefits can be economical, environmental, psychological, and social cultural. Behavior intentions are formed under attitude, social factors, and perceived behavior control. Attitude is formed by perceived consequences and the value of the consequences. Social factors include three elements, subjective norms, personal norms, and role beliefs. Subjective norms are the belief that a particular behavior is correct, appro appropriate, or desirable. Roles are sets of behaviors considered acceptable to those who hold certain position, for example, parents, leaders. Personal norms are person's ideas about oneself, self-concept. A survey of future technologists and designers of the light industry was performed to determine the probable behavior in upcycling and the main factors that shape this behavior. 95 students took part in it. Questions help to assess students' attitudes, subjective norms, personal norms, role beliefs, perceived behavior control, intentions, perceived facilitating conditions, perceived benefits, and match with the frequency of upcycling behavior. In the, in the answers was used seven points like at scale. The sample of respondents contains two branches that partially overlap. The branch that accumulates respondents with less upcycling practice, which can be conditionally called a group of negative attitudes, is more numerous. It includes 41 respondents who on average practice upcycling about once a year. The group um, of active upcyclers includes 40 people with an upcycling frequency of once every one dash three months. That's a group of positive attitude. The remaining 14 people in their answers indicate the frequency of upcycling about six months. That's a group with unformed attitude. The average survey results for the three groups are shown on this slide. The most influential factors are attitude, perceived behavior control, and intentions. On the second figure, uh, I compared the results of strong upcyclers uh, with the green color. That's respondents who practice upcycling weekly or even more often. And uh, the other students, um, the lines with a white color. To the group of strong upcyclers can be included only five people out of 95 surveyed students. That is about 5%. Strong upcyclers are aware of benefits of upcycling, while the vast majority are not. There are two possible reasons for contradictions between a positive attitude and lack of awareness of benefits. First is insufficient attention and formed infrastructure and legislation of waste recycling in Ukrainian society. People who do not practice upcycling often and regularly do not feel the public need and are not aware of the potential benefits of such activities. And second is education gap. The list of competences that future government technologists and designers must master does not involve the development of knowledge and skills needed to understand the importance and mastery of upcycling techniques. Due to the specifics of clothing products, upcycling in design and production is mainly applied to unique products, often minimal series by tellers or small companies. But the aim is to shift gradually from the individual upcycling to the development of forms of small and medium size. It becomes apparent that need to create different design processes and methods for recycling and reuse of waste. The integration of waste and recycling into the design process requires a change of thinking and approach. The design process depends on the type of waste collected and therefore requires constant adaptation and experimentation. And also, it is essential to develop students' creativity. Stakeholders think that creativity is one of the most important and necessary competences. On the next slides, um, the examples of the author's experience of implementing new methods and tasks to form creativity and organizing sustainable production using upcycling techniques in, in students majoring in professional education at Knotode are presented. Here we can see um, the name of the discipline, for example, methods of professional training, types of students' activity, description, and purpose. The next discipline, that's fundamentals of engineering and pedagogical creativity. 
Um, also, the changes were made in the discipline's fundamentals of clothing design and creative learning technologies. Uh, on this slide is presented the example of the startup project, designer products from textile waste, creation and sale, designed by Tamara Ostenka. The initial goal was to access the possibility of creating a company that focuses on the processing of used clothing and textiles to develop new projects. The next slides, they present their examples of students' work. For example, here you can see uh, a patchwork technique used to create a pillowcase from the textile waste. Um, that's also a patchwork technique to use a bag from a textile waste. And here is presented uh, an upcycling process of the denim jacket, old fashioned. Through a survey according to the combined model of theory of interpersonal behavior and theory of planned behavior, the personal motives of students of technology and designers regarding their participation in activities related to the processing of raw material are determined. According to the frequency of application of upcycling techniques, all respondents have divided approximately in a half. The division is between those who participate them regularly, that's once per one three months or more often, and those who use them infrequently, once a year or less. About 15% of respondents did not decide on their preferences. Regarding on the prospects of introducing upcycling technologies in future professional activities, there are problems at three levels, personal perception of upcycling, the formation of relevant skills and knowledge, and lack of experience in scaling personal expertise to the level of business startups. Factors influencing the commitment to use of upcycling are, identify, are identified. The most influential is one's attitude, control of behavior, and formed intentions. These factors shape the behavior of all defined groups, regardless of the frequency of application of upcycling techniques. The influence of social factors, perceived habits, and facilitation conditions is more moderate. It affects the behavior of people who are more prone to upcycling and has almost no effect on indifferent people. The contradiction between the high level of attitude and low evaluation of students' perceived benefits is revealed. Most students have a poor understanding of the benefits of upcycling. People who, for personal reasons, do not practice upcycling often and regularly do not feel the public needed and are not aware of the potential benefits of such activities. An important reason for this attitude is the education gap. A lack of attention to the development of competence creativity presents in the current higher education standards in the relevant field of knowledge. Meanwhile, generating ideas is key to mastering of cycling technology by textile industry specialists. Examples of possible changes in the curricula of disciplines, methods of professional training, fundamentals of engineering and pedagogical creativity, fundamentals of clothing design, creative learning technologies aimed at the formation of creativity have already passed practical testing at Notre Dame. The main reasons that complicate the scaling of acquired skills and knowledge in developing business startups with upcycling are analyzed. An example of the developed startup project designer products from textile waste creation and sale is given. Thank you for attention.